Brand new is the ability to go to the data tab and get data from Power Platform. And you have data flows. Dataverse is also very, very new. But data flows is the one we're going to talk about in this video because it's really, really awesome. So let's say that you have a data set that you just reuse all the time. So for example, here under this workspace, I have the Cambodia geocode. And this has um, every village with the code, with what province, what district, what commune it's in, and the XY coordinates, a unique name, and then district latitude and district longitude. And this is something that I reuse in a lot of my workbooks. So instead of having to build it every time from scratch using Power Query Desktop, you can build it on data flows and then bring it into multiple Excel workbooks and or multiple Power BI files. So let's look at data flows. My name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel and I love showcasing the new stuff. I'll talk about the licensing later on in this video. And if you want to go straight to that, you can check out the chapters in this video. Otherwise, let's get started. So if you go to a web browser and you go to app.powerbi.com, then you get to the Power BI infrastructure. Now, you need to go to a workspace to be able to access this thing. So here is my workspace, for example. And what I can do is I can go to the Get Data tab and I can choose Data Flows, Get Started. So let's go to Define New Tables. And then we get here, note that there are additional sources that are not available in Excel's version of Power Query, but not as many as Power BI's desktop version of Power Query. So I'm going to get it from an Excel workbook, and I'm going to connect to the workbook by browsing OneDrive and this one, fuzzy cluster column. I'm going to press select and then next. All right. So here I have the tables and the sheets. So as you may know, this means a worksheet and this means a table in Excel. So let's go for this one, for example, and transform data. And here we have the data. As you can see, it opens up Power Query. This is Power Query Online. So it's pretty much the same as Power Query on Excel Desktop, but slightly different. Power Query on Excel Desktop and Power Query in Power BI is the same, apart from the color scheme, pretty much, and a couple of slight differences. But this one has a few different features. So over here, we have some data we want to clean. So like usual, we can select this and we can choose remove other columns. And I can filter out the nulls by choosing remove empty. And then I can use headers as first row. Sometimes you need to click more things to get that. But here, use headers as first row. As you can see, I've got country names that are slightly misspelled. So probably one of my coolest things that you can do that is an alternative is you can go to the Add Column tab and choose Cluster Values. So if I click on that, I can add a new column name, and then you have fuzzy cluster options here. So you can say how much is a similarity threshold. If you've used merge queries, then this is pretty much the same options that you can get, but you can do it all through the user interface in a much nicer way, I think. Uh, group by combining text parts. This is whether you ignore spaces or not. Yes, ignore case, um, upper, lower case, and show similarity scores. I really, really like that. Press OK. You also have a transformation table that you can add. Uh, here you go. So here is the ones that it's added. It's added these two. So how similar it is and the one that it's clustered together. So as you can see, it's clustered some together. For example, France and France Miss Belt is put together, but sometimes it's made mistakes. So as you can see, it's put together Slovenia and Slovenia and Slovenia here, even though this is actually Slovakia, but it is 91% similar. <laughs> so it doesn't get it right the f every time, but it is good to just uh, kind of get an idea of what it is and then manually you would correct whether it needs to change. But it's quite good the way that it does it. Netherlands and the Netherlands and Holland, it didn't work out. But if you had another table, you could add that. That would be called a transformation table to get to and from the other one. I do have another video where I talk about this because actually you can get to the same features in Excel desktop or Power BI desktop if you use the formula. So if you use this thing, table.add fuzzy cluster column, you can actually copy and paste that into the other one. And I can show you, I can copy it. I can go to Excel. Um, I've already done it in this example. This is actually something from an earlier example. So if I click on the FX one, and then I copy and paste this, 
but instead of that one, I'm going to change the name of the previous step. Press enter, and then it does actually work, and it does add these two columns in the same way. So everything that you do on Power Query Online, even though you don't see it in the Add Columns tab, it is that you are able to do it with a custom code in Power BI or in Excel's Power Query. But let's go back to the online one. So another thing that we can do is, let me uh, duplicate this column. I can even if I want to go to transform and group by, and I also have fuzzy grouping options. So this is another thing that's only available in online. So I could say, for example, count the rows under each of those, use fuzzy grouping. So if you do show similarity scores under count rows, it doesn't work like that. But if you were to do a sum of something, then you can do it. Note the transformation table is blank because I don't have any other tables available here. But let's just do a count rows without this one and press OK. And there you go. So it's got two under France. It's uh, Slovenia. It's included Slovakia there, as we saw before. So it's not perfect, and it hasn't done these two either. Um, so I'm going to exit out of these steps. So those are two new things. Um, Marcus key is another one. So if I click that on this column, it is able to do a key here. And it just kind of marks it as a key. Uh, generally, you want to do this when there is a column without duplicates. Um, what it does is it essentially kind of makes merging queries faster, a faster operation. And uh, that's pretty much it. But for good practice, it can be a good thing to do if you are going to merge queries. Um, so those are the ones that are noticeably similar. All of these are pretty much the same as Power Query on desktop. In fact, I couldn't notice any features that are available in desktop that are not available here. Um, in custom column, you do have a data type option. So for example, if you say equals plus is column similarity times two, then you can set the data type to be a whole number and then it rounds it to nearest whole number like that. So that is a, a useful trick as well. So I kind of wish that existed on the desktop one because if it did, it meant you wouldn't have to then take another step to add that. Um, another thing that you will have noticed is the difference here. You have the icons, and actually the views are much, much better in Power Query Online. So in the views here, here for example, you can point to it and then things pop up. You can click on the different things. You have the icon of what it does to help you visually as well. This is the, uh, the settings, which you have elsewhere as well. And if you right-click and add properties and add a description, so this is... Um, Similarity times two, press OK. Then when you hover over it, it will give you that pop-up as well. Uh, it also has this. This is kind of like what happens uh, in terms of query folding. It's a bit more of an advanced step that I won't go into in this. But it can be quite nice. And you do have more places where you can hover over and get pop-ups. Uh, like before, you can drag and drop things. And then it will show you the data at that step. Oh, one thing that you do have is you have filter rows here, and it does ask you, like before, to do an intermediate step, which it doesn't do with filter rows if you do it on the desktop, interestingly. Uh, you go straight to this dialog box. I mean, you can get to the same dialog box by going here and like this on the desktop app. So it's not really a new feature, but it is in a new place here. And notice that you have transform to get to these extra things instead of having them all laid out on the home tab. Uh, these things are all in the transform tab, so I can understand why they did that. And you can also click here to get the table level features and right click on a column to get the column level features. Um, choose columns and go to column is still there. And you do have these two things. Now, this is only available if you have Power BI Premium. And Map to Entity, this is only really if you use the common data model. Go back to the last step. And the other things that I like are the different view options. So your view options in Power Query Desktop are pretty limited. But here you have, so um, if you want, you can minimize this. And you get the shorter ribbon tab, and you can press F11 to make a full screen. You can even press this to minimize that and get more view space. And then the view tab, you have the diagram view. So diagram view is like this. It's kind of a more sophisticated version of the dependencies view that you had in Power Query Desktop. But you can kind of see all the steps. You can minimize it. 
Uh, really good if you have multiple things that are related. You would see them as we'll see in a second if they are related. And then you can press plus to add a step. It goes to search for commands. Notice that you can also search for commands here like you can with this search bar in Outlook, Excel, Power BI, but not Power Query for those at the moment in Windows. And you can also drag and reorder columns. You can do whatever you want. Um, and then in the Queries pane, you can right click and you can choose, for example, Duplicate. They will create two at the same level. They're not related. But for example, if you right click and reference, then they are related. And then it does this line. But notice this, computer tables require Power BI Premium to refresh. So you need to use Power BI Premium to make that work. And unfortunately, that happens for anything that is grouped together. So I'm going to delete this one. If, for example, I want to merge the queries, so I'm going to go to merge queries, then I'm going to do both of them like this. Uh, it's kind of a nonsensical merge because they're the same table. But notice that you do have this, which is a nice user interface, and fuzzy matching options. You have similarly to what you would see in the other fuzzy stuff. So if you press OK, then it will create that. But again, you get this computed tables. Um, and that also happens with if you, for example, use append. So if you need to do that stuff and you don't have Power BI Premium, you can just do that in Excel or Power BI Desktop. You had something called dependencies views in the Windows one, but this is kind of a lot more sophisticated. But probably the one that I prefer, actually, is the schema view. So this one, you can toggle between data and schema view, and you can switch diagram view on or off. Uh, you have other things here. Um, so if I switch that off, and notice in data view, you get all these things that you have in the other one, column profiles, etc. But what I like about schema view is you just see the column names like this. You can drag and drop them to move them, multi-select like that, drag and drop, super easy. You can change the data types. You can rename them if you want to. And you can also change the data types for multiple by clicking on them and going to transform here, change the data type like that. Uh, you can search for column names here as well. So it's really good if you're working with a lot of columns. You have schema tools that allows you to do all these things. Yeah, you can if you want to. You can have multiple keys per one if you want to. Uh, it's not something that I use so often, though. A yeah, close schema view will take you back to the normal data view. So those are pretty much all of the new things. So when you're done, you press save and close, which is down here. Notice you have some more view options, ways that you can get to the view options down here as well. So save and close. Save your data flow. So this is going to be um, test for video. Press save. And notice that because it contains computed tables which require premium to refresh, I need to make a premium capacity. That's for this second one. This one doesn't have that symbol, so that should be okay for refresh. You can schedule refresh if you want to. And if you have Power BI Premium, you can do machine learning models, etc. Edit the tables will take you back to uh, the query editor. So once I've done this, how can I bring it into Excel or Power BI? So from Excel desktop, you can go to data, get data, and from Power Platform. And I did show you this briefly from data flows. You need to navigate to what it is. So this is within a workspace. And this is the only one with data flows. And my data flows is the test for video, one I just made. And then once you've got that, you can just click on the table and load it directly to the worksheet or transform data like you can do with a lot of these things. So you do need to have Microsoft 365 current channel of Excel plus at least one of these things, which is Power BI Pro or Power BI Premium or Microsoft 365 E5 license. And the latter two you might actually have without knowing it because they are organizational wide. So you have to have data flows in order to do that and you need to start this from a workspace. So let's look at how it is online. 
All right, so that's the end of this video on data flows and how you can access some new features <laughs> that are not otherwise available in Power Query. So if you like this video, then I've got plenty more on my channel. I do videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Teams, Zoom. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of stuff. And I love doing the new features, including the new Excel connector to data flows. Thanks for watching.